Mandalinka. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have really good streams. How is your Thursday? Happy Thursday. Um, I need to gather my stuff. Sorry I'm a little late. Uh, I'm about five minutes late. Sorry. Um, I had to finish eating. Hey, Jonty. It's going good, Paladin. A little rushed today, but otherwise good. How you doing? DJ. Um, does anybody need the Journey June link for the survey? Let me know. Um, and I'll just try to put that in at some point. I'll put it in right now. Okay. That's really weird. It's almost exactly five by seven. I eyeballed an exact five by seven. That's crazy. Okay. So. Do you guys have any best and worst of your day thus far? Still too early to tell. Postcard size illustrations for the giveaway. Cool. Don't forget to scan them. You could also make them into a postcard set. Anything you do for stuff like that can also um, amount to an actual product. The only time I wouldn't do something like that is if you were going to like. Like, I wouldn't exactly take someone's commission, very specific commission they wanted you to do, and then make that into a product. Obviously, that's very theirs, especially if it's an OC. You can never take someone's OC and make it into, you know, a print or something. That's just, you know. But any other time you're doing stuff like that, absolutely. Hangover, Paladin, are you partying too much? What are you doing? Do you remember which protein thing was the one that Tyler got? And we were like, bah. It actually wasn't that bad. No, it was, it was the like Vega one, right? A what? Vega? I think so. It was yeah. white. Yeah. White jars. I think maybe because we just had it in nothing, maybe? No, I was fine with it. Yeah. You didn't like it. Yeah. I mean, it's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. Yeah. 
Oh, cramps. Oh my god. I hate cramps. I've actually started taking weights, like lifting weights, and when I get cramps, I put them, like I lay on the floor on my back, and I put them on my abdomen, and it feels good. This pressure there feels good. Hello, women wonder, how are you? get me going on a rant. some matcha, but there was a, uh, I had a, technically it was a matcha shot. Oh yeah, get to work, Lynn. Do it up. Get it, get it, get it. You guys, I don't know if you can really see the spots here yet. Also, it's green. I don't want it to be. On camera, it's green. It's not really green. Hold on. I can adjust that. Journey Gym comic? Are you still going on that? If so, awesome. Way to do it. For this, I'm just looking where all the markings are on the deer and just kind of getting them around the same areas. Since every deer is different anyway, it's okay if they're not the exact same. 
obviously it's going to make it its own deer and that also helps with the idea of perfection that you don't need to get it perfect um, so definitely don't like stress over the markings of an animal um, make sure they're still your own in the way you want to do them because on every animal of, of course they're going to be different I drink tea? Yeah, I do. I prefer espresso drinks, um, because I can't have coffee. Coffee gives me headaches for some reason, but espresso doesn't. Um, so usually I'll, I'll even take, like, shots of espresso instead. Um, but tea is okay sometimes. It really doesn't do the trick in terms of energy that coffee does. Um, I really like the caffeine high from coffee way more than tea because tea it's an alertness it's not exactly an energy um, so I mean it's like taking ginseng or ginkgo like you're gonna feel more smart and alert but like you're not really gonna have more energy exactly you know it's not the same but definitely they're for different things Like, I usually like tea more as a settle down, uh, low caloric drink sort of thing. Oh, Grim, thank you for the host. Welcome. Out how things work. And for people who don't know what that's from, because I'm guessing it's majority of the people here, we just quoted Step Brothers. Yesterday we put liquid paper on a bee. That's my favorite line. Today, still dead. Or your teeth, for that matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I usually never put sugar in tea. I put honey in tea. And usually honey is a better, uh, like, sweetener. I feel like it tastes sweeter than sugar, I feel like. So you use less to get more. Um, but uh, honey's better for you. <laughs> it's actually got a lot of antioxidants and stuff. So I would try to swap out your sugar with honey once in a while, see if you like it. Um, yeah, Gabe adds a lot of sugar to his coffee and tea, and I, I can't do it. It's a lot. Um, hey, Bodie. Have you or Gabe worked on your comics since Journey June ended? <laughs> Um, I went back and I organized them and I started making notes on what I needed to add or change, but because of the fact next week we're going to um, Supercon, we've also been prepping for a convention and um, getting a lot of our print orders and stuff ready, so for us it's going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, we're better about going back to stuff because we've done it a bunch of times, but we definitely will be going back um, and most likely working on them on streams when we get there uh, but it might take us a little bit to get back to it do you have a napkin? you want a big one? Or? it doesn't matter, I just need it quickly Bodie, how's things? 
house tricks. Oh, fire seal. Oh, thank you. Neat wildlife, thank you. How are you doing, fire seal? How's things? How's your rest going? Okay, guys. Oh, and watch Ant-Man. Did the new one come out? No, this weekend. Oh, nice, Bodhi. Draw that map. That's what you're working on, right? The soul quest stuff? And Gabe and I will have to order from you soon because you moved. We were waiting until you got settled in. You seem like you're settled in now, right? You've been coming to more streams and stuff. Sorry to assume. So I'm going to probably be selling this one at Supercon just because remember everything you make. It is the product. Even nature doesn't want you out there. 
Whereas I feel the exact opposite for uh, winter, funny enough. friends too that just thrive on summer and they can just sit outside in the heat and I'm like how how in the world are you capable of doing that I don't get it like um I think Tim's one of them and Tim can just go outside and be outside for hours and as much as I love being outside I only really want to be outside if it's nice weather right the guy can do it he can work out in it like do yard work and everything I'm like, or something else. I wish I could, but man. Whenever my parents would go out on the boat when I was a kid, and I'd go with them sometimes, um, it would just be so unbearably hot, but at least you'd, you know, you'd have uh, water to jump into. So I'm actually okay if I've got, like, water. And my main thing, my favorite thing when I actually had my own house was, um, this is going to sound kind of white trash and I'm okay with that, um, I would take a kiddie pool, granted I had a dog, but even if I didn't have the dog, I, I would have done this anyway, fill up the kiddie pool and just lay in the kiddie pool, I was more than fine with that. <laughs> yeah, right Wim? Oh my god, I hate the wall that happens with air conditioning too. Like, and just the fact that you feel so isolated and trapped, almost, like a prisoner in a place with air conditioning, like, like I said, I love having windows open, I love, you know, having the wind in the house and stuff, but when it's so hot out, you can't do that, and then you feel like you're a prisoner. I hate that feeling. I really, really hate that feeling. I could never live in the South, I think, for that reason. Like, everyone down there just depends on air conditioning. It's like going from air-conditioned place to air-conditioned place. I don't want to do that. That sounds horrible. And then what if it goes out, you know? Oh my god. That's so scary. Hi, Grim. Does anybody here actually really like the heat? I'm curious. Don't worry, you're not gonna get crucified or anything. I just, I'm really curious. I almost wonder too if it's an artist thing that, you know, we just don't want to be uncomfortable. I remember, I think it was last year, last summer maybe? Either last summer or the summer before last summer. Gabe and I went to an Urban Sketchers uh, seminar, I think, where we'd go to different classes, and um, one was on bookbinding, one was on, like, um, urban sketching, actually, where you'd sketch buildings and stuff. Um, it was fun, but it was, like, 90 outside, so I had my little fold-up chair, there's no shade, I'm in the middle of Chicago, and it was just... I don't know, it, it wasn't miserable, but it wasn't nice either, you know, so I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't want to be outside. Yeah, Paladin, I'm with you. Heat sucks, so no one likes heat, huh? If you like heat, speak up. Seriously, it's okay. But yeah, for the rest of us, we are not, not in it. Like, that's why, I mean, my Minnesota blood, man, I will take a blizzard any day. Any day. 
Give me eight feet of snow, 20 below, I'll be happy. Because I'm, I'm of the firm belief that you can always add stuff on you when you're cold, right? Get five blankets, then it's even comfier. More the merrier. But in heat, you can't take off your skin. Not without a ton of pain, but sometimes it's like you can't get any colder unless you remove your skin. So it gets weird, man. It's real weird. What? What's the real reason I'm vegetarian? Sound like heat? I don't understand. Oh god, yeah, Jaunty. Ugh. That's scary. Luckily, the apartment um, unit we have, the guys had told us we got a brand new air conditioner this year, so. Oh, Bodie, that's jumping conclusions. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that. I mean, that's not my reason anyway. Um, I mean, mine is really a 50-50 of, um, you know, just trying to cut down on eating it and having those things be further uh, perpetuated, you know, like the slaughtering and farms and all that junk. But it's also for health, and I have felt a ton better uh, being vegetarian over eating meat. I was always sluggish when I ate meat. Um, and I always got the meat sweats. You guys get the meat sweats? I always got the meat sweats. I don't like the meat sweats. Ugh. You want to feel fat, get the meat sweats, man. Yeah, I used to be a big one, too. Big girl. For my frame, I was a big girl. Blood Thursday. That's cute. I mean, you do you, man. You do what works for, you know, your situation. I mean, there's some people who have to eat meat to live because of a, like, some sort of deficiency that plants can't provide. I get it. I mean, everybody's got their own situation, their own reasons, all that stuff. I just, in any case, for anything ever in the world, for whatever reason, I just hate it when people have bad reasons for things. And I don't think some of the reasons are valid ones. But, you know, if you've got a good reason, you can't, you can't argue with that. Shit, bird, what are you doing? It is funny, though, that anyone that moved into Bond House who wasn't a vegetarian already became a vegetarian. I'm telling you, if you are kind of a lazy person, being a vegetarian is actually beneficial because you don't have to wash things very thoroughly. <laughs> you don't have to worry about foodborne Ill illnesses and stuff, salmonella and things. At least not as, as hard as you would have to. You know, with cleaning your cutting board and all the stuff that the raw meat touched, and all those things. It gets cold sometimes. That's yeah. So that's what I don't like, Bodhi, is is how we're how we're doing it. I think we're handling so many things, not even just meat production, but you know, petroleum, all that kind of stuff, in the worst way. But it's like I can't do anything about it. You know, I can do as much as I can, but that's not going to be enough to change anything, but it's like a balance between what's comfortable for you, um, what you feel makes enough of a difference, you know, all that crap. Yeah, DJ, that's kind of a bad reason. That was actually one of the ones I was thinking of. I don't think something tasting good over saving a life is a good enough reason, but... Like I said, my reasoning doesn't have to be your reasoning. If that, if you're okay with killing something for its taste, that's up to you. That's between you and the thing. I don't find that a good enough reason. But like I said, that's just me. I mean, a 
a lot of it is, it's similar to a religion and how you're raised, too. So, like, I was raised in a very meat-heavy family. Like, I miss beef stew like crazy, but then again, I haven't done very well trying to find a, like, a substitute. But we're working on it. There, overall, though, I'm very pleased with what I've found for subs. Um, at first it was kind of tough, but it's gotten easier. Yeah, I don't agree with that, but to each their own. I don't like arguing about that stuff on my channel anymore. It gets me kind of heated, so I'm going to avoid it and be a smart cookie about it. You guys can fight all you want, but me as a figurehead, I have to take kind of a middle road middle of the road, at least in my own channel. I just kind of wish a little bit that it was back in the day when you had to kill your own food if you wanted to eat it, and let's see then if taste, taste is the reason. I had trouble, I mean, even killing a mouse when it it should be put down because it, it had a broken leg, it was in a mouse trap at work, and I should have just stomped it, but man, I I was having the hardest time. I think if people had to kill their own for the most part. I believe you, Fire Seal. Were you raised into that? I'm guessing yes. Like you didn't just say, I'm gonna start you know, killing rabbits for meat. I'm guessing you didn't do that. And plus, my ex-husband's uh, family were hunters. But I mean, they were like, legit hunters. They were bow hunters and stuff. You know, and they would use all the meat. So they were at least good about it. I give them a lot of credit for that. But... Still. I didn't enjoy going to their house. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, I always get the question, like, what about if it's the apocalypse? Are you gonna eat meat then? It's like, well, if my life depends on it, yeah, dumbass. But I'm not gonna, like, do it now. My life doesn't depend on it now. I mean, like, if you don't have to, why would you? We have so many other options and so many other tastes that, you know, I've actually found there are some tastes that, um, in the vegetarian world that I actually didn't taste before the vegetarian stuff. So turning vegetarian actually almost gave me more things to try and eat, which was cool. Because I actually, I was like, oh man, I'm not going to get to have any of these flavors anymore, and blah, 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 blah. But instead, I got a lot of different ones. Like, you know, I mean, tofu, depending on where you get it from and how you prepare it, yeah, tofu can suck. I mean, I'll, I'll agree with that. It can be bland as shit. But, if you go somewhere that has good tofu, or you learn to prepare it appropriately, you too can make good tofu. It's not hard, Fire Seal. A lot of people that say, oh, I wish I could be vegetarian, it's like, you can, you just don't want to put in the time. It is not hard. The people that I know that are vegetarians outside of this household are some of the laziest people in terms of eating. And it's easier to make vegetarian food by a million. You don't have to make sure it's fully cooked. You don't have to do anything. It's basically reheating everything because it's it's just a plant there's no scariness to it you know which is the part i like so honestly i'm telling you straight up you're spending way too much time on meat <laughs> cooking it because you got to make sure it's either you know rare and in a certain area and all that stuff and nah and then washing stuff gabe and i like a lot of the time We'll just rinse the plate, not even use soap, and put it in the in the drying rack because you don't need to really wash anything. You know, 
know, it just comes straight off. So we save a lot of time that way, which is really nice. Yeah. I would uh, almost challenge you to, you know, try to wean off it, and then the flavor thing, really, it's like, if you've ever been on a hardcore diet or anything like that, your tastes change, your palate changes. Like if you ever had to cut out sugar, your palate completely changes. If you had ever had to cut out salt, your palate changes. And then you don't even crave stuff anymore. It's really weird. And the same goes for this. It's just diet changes. Drink meat? What is drinking meat? DJ, that's weird. What did I do, Bodhi? Oh yeah, we don't even have a microwave, actually. Uh, no, I drink almond milk, actually. And eggs are actually vegetarian. They're not vegan, but they are vegetarian. Because they're like a chicken, period. Not every egg produces a chicken. So they are not vegan, but they are vegetarian. That's crazy, Bodhi. We don't even have a microwave. We have a pizzazz. We have a grill. Um, and the grill just cooks everything in two minutes. Like, our fake chicken is done in two minutes. And it tastes phenomenal. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, where am I going to go with this now? I honestly just like these colors. I don't want to go crazy on it, honestly. Yeah! Oh my god, Fire Seal. You should get a pizzazz. They're great. Especially if you... You know, we don't have pizza a lot, but we do cook, like, chicken nuggets on it. We cook, um, honestly, anything breaded, we don't put on the grill, we put it on the pizzazz. Because if you put the breaded stuff on the grill, sometimes the grill will kind of rip it off. And that'd be regardless of if it's real meat or not. Sometimes it just rips it up. So we put a lot of the breaded stuff on the pizzazz. Works great, man. Seriously. It was actually our going away gift from Vaughn House. They got us a pizzazz because they knew we used it so much there. Because Tim had one. It was really great. We have used it basically every day since. It's a wonderful thing. And I don't think they're too expensive either, honestly. But yeah, George Foreman grills and vegetarian, like, anything go hand in hand. Like, especially the veggie bacon. I like it better than real bacon. And it didn't honestly take me long to say that. It's not like I got acclimated to it. I'm saying, like, the minute I had it off of a, a George Foreman, it's way better. It's crispier. It's less fatty, salty, all that stuff. All the bad things about bacon that no one wants to admit they don't like, it doesn't have that. It's fantastic. Like, I love it way more. Even if I went back to eating meat, I'd still eat the veggie bacon, honestly. I know that sounds insane, but it's true. Oh, thanks, Wim! Yeah, watercolor's nice. It's, it's super low-key. Um, the only real thing you need to know when you're doing watercolor is not to use a ton of colors on it. Um, I think a lot of people overdo it and then it gets muddy. Um, Gabe actually taught me a lot about watercolor and that with watercolor, less is more. So the less amount of strokes you can use, the less amount of colors, all that kind of stuff, your watercolor is gonna end up better. So always take that into account, I guess. It is very difficult depending on how you look at it. I think the hardest part of watercolor is the color mastery, but other than that, the application is a little tricky. Like the water uh, balance with the pigment, that's been my hardest part. Um, since I work with subdued colors anyway, I don't have to worry too much about the color aspect of things, but. I think a lot of the time, if you're, you know, if you're doing subdued colors or whatever, the hardest part might actually be um, your water balance with the pigment. 
which I'm getting better at, but sometimes it's hard. If, okay, fire seal, here's the deal though. I tried the veggie bacon um, years ago without grilling it, and I hated it. I was like, this is like a fruit roll up, and blah, blah, blah. You have to cook it the right way, and then every time after that, it's perfect. But you have to cook it using one of those like George Foreman grills. Otherwise, it, like if you pan cook it, it does not turn out the same. Um, but yeah. DJ wants to know what you thought about their butt, Gabe. It was wonderful. Well done. Did you repost it for them? I haven't reposted yet. I haven't reposted anyone's yet. I didn't know people ate bacon raw, but if they get sick, they Ooh, deserve it. Wow. Because, wow. That's kind of messed up. Oh, uh, why'd you fall, fall out of it, Wim? Just because? Time and stuff, or? I already feel like I'm done with this. This is crazy. Uh, it's like been 45 minutes. Um, I'll go back in and Painting can be tough. Um, I think the thing you should do if you want to paint, but every time you try, you kind of fall out of it, it might be the prep for it that kind of turns you off. Um, that was mine for a while. Honestly, if you get one of these, though, one of these, like, crummer things, it makes it really easy to just pop it open and just watercolor. Um, I can see where the acrylics, it's like, set it up or even oils I still haven't tried oils and I don't really care to um, just because of all the hubbub with them it's too much BS and I don't want to deal with that so um, I mean I could understand if, if you got turned off by painting because it, it was a hassle but if you try the watercolors or gouache this way I think you'll be better better off trying it talking about like doing a study of something while you're actually doing a piece so right now I actually thought that um, deer had very you know random patterns and stuff uh, according to this picture it seems that a lot of the spots on a deer are actually in lines um, and they're not as random actually which I was not aware 
So I'm studying this deer while also painting this deer so that I can technically sell my study. Because basically anything you do you can save even if you really, really mess it up. Um, you can usually save it and then if you're a freelancer, like we were saying before, um, everything you make is basically a product you can sell. So when you have that mentality in mind going into every piece, it's good to kind of know that, you know, well, I can always fix this, I can always, you know, make it better. And a lot of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, no one's going to notice. And if they do notice, they might be an artist themselves, you know, something like that. But typically, it's, it's usually you who notices too much. Did you find out about that article? Um, just that there's like a lot of uh, like plant protein is like the best because mm. it doesn't. Uh, some of it's got like mostly usually it's got whey in it, yeah. and so that's basically just lactose, so it can like mess with you. Yeah, depending um, on what your gut's like. Yeah, but then there's also like, it also has gluten in it, mm -hmm. so that can also be detrimental. Um, but the plant-based proteins are like the easiest thing for you to process and uh, like, and even in terms of them processing it, mm -hmm. like at a plant, it's easier. like it's way easier to just, like they don't have to go through as much chemical stuff to make the protein powder as opposed to it using oh, cool. uh, plants, yeah. That and you're not hurting any animals. Animals. Well, we already went down that road while you were in the shop. Do you have any pets? 
Hey, Eliza. I don't think we ever asked you here if that's Bowie. Don't worry, I'm not trying to, you know, sell you. <laughs> I legitimately want to know if you have pets. Happy Thursday, Eliza. How you doing? At least it's Thursday here. Still. Scotty Jack Russell. So he's got attitude and he's energetic, I'm guessing. Typically, Scotty's have a little bit of attitude, and Jack Russell's are non stop. Unless he's older. Grumpiness is usually the Scotty. Scotty's are a bit grumpy. So he's got an attitude. But he's energetic. And honestly, this went a bit faster than I thought it would. Because I guess I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the other thing with watercolor. You get done pretty quick. Is that true, Gabe? Yes. Especially if you um, keep it simple. Yeah. And I think that's the nice thing about watercolor is that you can throw you can down. Get a lot done. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's in the same sense. It's like almost like marker where you can just flush in a whole thing real quick. Um, yeah. Marker still has its problems. Yeah. Here, do you think I need to do anything more on this? I don't really think so. Maybe a couple dots on the neck, but that's it. That's great. So did you put a, um, you put a wash in the background? No. I just did a little vignette when I was done. Oh, okay. It's not an all over wash, no. Maybe I like I'll the, put uh, a couple plants in the background. I like the shadow underneath. It's very, uh, it's like a cool shadow, but it's it's like a warm shadow. On the ground or on no, the... On the, on, his, on the back legs? Oh, uh, yeah. Or the legs? I think I used the wrong blue. I was supposed to use the blue I hate, but I refused. <laughs> but no, it works because it's a it's a warm thing anyways. Oh. So sometimes I go warm, cool. I know it sounds really weird. A warm, cool. No, uh, it doesn't. I get it. It actually makes sense. it too for anybody if I could. Little 
like I said, it's more like uh, who I deem worthy of my dog, which is basically no one but me, even Gabe. It took me probably about three years to trust my ex-husband with our dog after I told him a million times over how to take care of her. Because she was a bulldog, and bulldogs are a lot more trouble. They're a lot harder to take care of, but to me, they're worth it. Like, if I get another dog, it's going to be another bulldog. Um, but, yeah, there's a whole different uh, set of care you have to take with the bulldog than a normal dog. Normal dogs are pretty self-sustaining. It sounds cute, Eliza. I don't think a Red Riding Hood at all, honestly. I mean, as long as you don't use like an actual wolf and it's a werewolf and you know you, she's not wearing red, I think you'll be fine. Oh, get some sleep, Bodie. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Bye. Usually up before we go to a con, we're making a lot of content to sell. So like this is something I'm going to sell at the con. Unless, of course, one of you guys wants it, you get first dibs. But, um, for the most part, a lot of the stuff we make on the streams before we go to a convention is going to be for the convention. But, you know. Oh, she's wearing white. Oh, yeah, you're good. No problem, Bodhi. Enjoy sleep. I'm tired already. Supercon in Florida, which is in Fort Lauderdale. Um, never been to Florida, so this should be interesting. But we're flying out next Wednesday. So this is probably the last stream until we get back from that. So until probably the 16th. Um, Unless you get really lucky and Gabe decides to do one on Monday, the 9th. But I would almost not put money on that. How do we keep track of how many cons? Well, we have a giant year calendar on our wall. Um, it's about four feet by three feet. It's huge. And it's got every month on it. And we write every con that's on it. And every month has about three cons. I mean, two to three. At least after February. February's got one. January usually has zero to one. Same with November, December. Um, we've decided to start taking off November and December to work on commissions for Christmas and things. Because usually at the cons that are in the fall, like August, September, October area, those, when we get a commission, they're usually Christmas commissions. So then we usually need to pound on those like during November. So throwing a con in there, that would be crazy. But um, we did that last year and it was too much. Too much. Way too much. I didn't end up finishing my September commissions until a month ago. So I don't want to do that again. Uh, especially just two people. It's not even that, you know, I mind, it's that I'd hate that they have to wait. So, um, yeah, the cons that we go to. Are usually the bigger cons, they're uh, 
reputable, they're good, um, we know what to expect, especially because we do a bunch of them, you know, trial and error, you find out what ones work for you, what ones don't. Um, like Gabe and I don't go to small anime cons, we don't make money, so we, we don't go to those. So depending on what kind of artist you are and what kind of art you do, that's kind of going to dictate what cons you go to. Um, so that's kind of how we sift through the ones that exist. But there are a lot, it's true. There are some too where it's kind of easier to choose not to go to them because of some other reason. Like there's a string of cons that are run by a guy that's kind of unsavory, I'll say. So we don't like to give him our time or money. So we are uh, immediately blacklist his cons. And then um, the Wizard World cons are not good conventions. Um, not for indie artists. Um, so we don't go to any of those. So it ends up being kind of easy, you know, which ones we do go to then. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is trial and error. Yeah, he wasn't a good guy. He did some really weird shit. So. And then that, you know, in turn, um, what's the word? Uh, um, divides a lot of artists, I guess, because the ones that still go, you know they're going just because of money. And then the ones that aren't going are trying to stand for a reason, you know, not to go. So it becomes a point of contention. The first con ever, Eliza, that we ever went to? Do we like traveling? Um, I'd say for the most part, yeah. I never left my home state until two years ago. So I was in Minnesota and never left it until 30. Um, I recommend no one else do that. <laughs> um, but as far as traveling goes, I think we like it. It can be a hassle sometimes and kind of draining, but um, if you're doing it once in a while, it's okay. I think monthly or multi-monthly can be a little tiring. Um, bye, Wim. Thanks for coming. First con we've been to, I think my first one that I actually tabled at was, was that, um, what was that? It wasn't, uh, I think it was, uh, ICC? NWI. That one, yeah, NWI, um, that's in Indiana. Um, the first con I ever went to or attended was when I was 18, um, and that was Anime Detour, but I was a cosplayer. <coughs> what was your first con you tabled at? Uh... I think it was an ASEN, uh, an Anime Central, uh, because it uh, sometimes the people wouldn't show up. Back in the day, people didn't show up all the time because it you'd go online and you'd buy a table, um, and I mean anyone could buy a table, and so you'd have like you know like teenagers who would buy a table and then they would wouldn't be able to get there, or like mom wouldn't oh, let yeah. them go out. So uh, there would be a lot of tables that were just empty. Um, so I just took one, uh, selling my stuff. Uh, but the first convention I ever attended was like a baseball, not a baseball card trading convention, but it was like a trading card convention. So it was like a, a banquet hall full of people selling baseball cards and uh, comic book trading cards and there were probably some comics there. I didn't see any, but... Did you get dragged there by someone? Uh, no, uh, Kevin's mom took us. Uh, really? Yeah, because she, she was a collector, so she would go and... I didn't know she breached into baseball cards. No, it wasn't baseball, but it, because it, it because they had, um, you Marvel know, like... Marvel cards and stuff? Huh? Marvel cards and yeah, stuff? Yeah, but she would also buy, like, Star Trek cards and Dukes of Hazard cards and... Weird. You know, like Indiana Jones card. You know, like in the ni in the eighties and nineties, like that was yeah. big. Like Topps was making baseball cards out of, or just trading cards in general out of anything that they could. Right. Um, 
So there were a lot of like. So is she rich on that stuff now? Like she has to be. I don't know what she's doing with it. Like they stopped talking to her because she, uh, she was always kind of crazy and mean. Oh. Um, so they, uh, yeah, like the family has sort of stopped talking. I think the one son, like yeah. the son that stuck around, he still lived with her uh, for a while because he was sort of also a dick. But, uh, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what ended up happening there. But yeah, she was basically just rich anyways because of like her husband worked for AT&T and he had all like were they still together? no he died when Kevin was a kid Kevin's dad died? yeah when he was a kid how old? from what? uh I don't remember I don't know uh, was that before you or after? before me yeah wow. he, he died when he was young so, so I, that's why he got spoiled yeah yeah well, then also the mom was into collecting things, buying things, so she would I just think she dove into that because of the death. Yeah, he. I think he was into it. He was into uh, yeah. getting stuff like that, so, yeah. But usually that happens. Yeah. Alright. I think this is fairly good. Yeah, Eliza, if you have any more questions on that stuff, feel free to ask. We're happy to answer questions. A lot of the time, um, people will I idealize the, the convention life and be like, oh man, it's so cool. I mean, I did. I completely did. When I had a 9 to 5, the convention life seemed very like exotic and cool and you travel <laughs> and how do you do that? And, oh man, you know. But, I mean, it's as, it's as difficult or, um, well, I'll just say difficult, as just regular job and stuff um, if not harder because there's a lot of physical labor that goes into it a lot of people don't know about like that you have to take sometimes like four or five luggages a couple blocks of street you know and that sort of stuff you gotta lift things on planes and like I'm lucky I've got Gabe because I don't think I'm that strong right now you know you gotta be in pretty good physical condition to do this stuff. Um, well, I feel bad for those people that like just definitely are not in good physical condition and they're doing the shows. Yeah. Um, like but that. the ones that have control over it that don't have medical things, like, yeah. that's on them. But, you know, if you've got medical issues to as to why you, you, know, you can't do physical stuff, that sucks. Yeah. Like, that. So that would be tough as a Yeah, luckily, um, I mean, I feel like you have to be somewhat of an ambivert to do it right. Um, if you are the type that doesn't like people or, you know, you are super shy, this is probably not for you. Mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of be able to turn on and off the talking, you know, and pace yourself throughout a day, that sort of thing. Because, um, yeah, it can be very draining. You're absolutely right. Um, but, like, Gabe and I, I feel like, are kind of the same in the fact that we can both be extroverts, but we are both introverts as well. Um, but being an ambivert, you know, you can turn it on and off, but at the end of the day, I think you still like to recharge. You know, you don't get your energy from people, which is what an extrovert does. Talking some red bull. Oh, we get our caffeine on when we go to conventions, yeah. that's true. Like, I, I buy a Monster or a Red Bull or whatever I can get my hands on, and I have to drink it halfway through the day. Because like, it's funny, you get simultaneously just tired from being that on, mm -hmm. you know? As you do just, like, I'll feed off people for the most part. Like, if it is a good con and there's a lot of people, I'll usually be okay. Like, I won't need to recharge. It's the slower conventions where, you know, people are trickling in. There's more of a just a wave to the crowd, you know, and it gets really hypnotic. That's what tires me out. Or if people's energy is just super low, 
And that's the point I feel like an extrovert, because when people are energetic to me, I'll start feeding it back to them at cons. In real life, not, not parties. Like, if I'm at a party and somebody's going kind of crazy on me, I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, depending on who it is in the party, but typically I just don't want to be at a party. <laughs> I don't like to do this. Mom says doesn't want to be at the party. Yeah, sometimes people can be draining, absolutely. And I mean, sometimes you'll get a creeper guy if you're a girl, and they kind of hang around, and that just wears on you, like your patience, because they're not really respecting that you're doing your job right now, you know? Um, and that, that sucks. Sometimes yeah. you just get people that, they're not even creepers, they're just lonely and they just want to talk to people so they yeah. they keep uh, coming back to your table and you're like all right yes eliza i'm very much an empath yeah i wish i had more control over my own emotions <laughs> but typically i do play off of others yeah you feel me you get it maybe you can do a smaller one down here maybe a bunny how uh, do you have an atc nearby yeah. oh you want uh doesn't matter
people are there are cool, if they're not, eh. Either way, you're still doing what you're doing, you know? So if you ever start streaming, Liza, remember that. You're doing it for you first. Thank you, Paladin. I know you like doing um, monthly challenges, but what what do you like to draw on your own? Like, I guess I don't even know what you like to draw because I always see you just doing the challenges.
that you don't want to do that, you know, so you don't waste time with it. So whatever it is you don't want to do, you don't have to do it. You know, just because everybody else is. Maybe somebody loves drawing humans, let them do it. If you find you're really good at drawing, like, teapots, maybe you're a teapot guy, draw teapots. You know, why not? If that's what you like doing, do it. Like, I found out I don't like drawing humans. I just, I'm bored as hell with humans. All humans are just basically the same. When you draw them, you just modify a couple factors and that's it. Okay, Eliza, so you do want to draw humans. Is that what you're saying? You just want to practice, though, getting better? Or... Yeah, I mean, every time I do it, they're usually super stylized now, because I just... I hate hyper-realism. Like, I hate it. There's nothing alluring about it to me, or cool. So, when I draw humans, I basically don't draw humans. They're not humans, they're just other characters. I mean, you look at comics and stuff, that's what a lot of people are doing. It's just stylized. I think everyone gets bored of anatomy, so styles emerge from the parts of anatomy you want to look different, that you're bored with. You know? You're changing that to be something that you enjoy. So that, like, um, if you look at Sean Galloway, whose cheeks online, he does very, like, push pr proportions and stuff. And that's probably because he got bored of doing a lot of, you know, regular anatomy and stuff. He'd rather do something cartoony because it's more fun and interesting to him than just regular hyperrealism or just realism in general. So, you know, finding out if you do or do not like realism is important, you know? Honestly, I think the smartest thing you can do being an artist is learn where you're wasting your time. Like if you're studying the wrong things or stuff like that. I guess that's just wasting your time. Oh, thank you, Paladin. Hi, Ushi. It's about trying food, Ushi says. Ushi, I want that gorgonzola. Maybe you could do a bunch of cheese chicks. They're all different cheeses. Gabe is sighing a lot. No, I'm just breathing heavy because I'm a big boy. So heavy I don't know, my belly's full of milkshake. It's not even a milkshake. Huh? It's a smoothie. I know, but I, I had it was a lot. Okay. I think I need water. <laughs> I need water. That escalated quickly. I just get so thirsty sometimes and then I drink like a bunch of water and I'm like I'm not I'm I need I just need blood. I think I just need blood. You need blood. Yeah, I think that's what it boils down to sometimes. Okay. You know? No. You never been like mega thirsty? Blood? But yeah, okay, so you know like in, in like vampire movies, you know, they're like, I'm so thirsty all the time. Oh, ah. yeah. And then it's like, if I, you come to find out that he just needed to eat someone. Yeah, um, but he's hungry. He wasn't thirsty. He was yeah. Hungry. But I know I'm not hungry. I think I just, I need a liquid. Blood. 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 It'd be even cuter, Ushi, if somehow you could theme them on Mythos, but I know that'd be a lot harder. I mean, Gorgonzola is basically the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Unless you could do, like, Mozzarella? What's a... Uh, what's a uh, uh, Medusa? What about her? Was she a, a Gorgon? She's a Gorgon. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah. Gorgon's a Gorgon. Yeah. Oh, 
Um, but like think of other cheeses and then try to match them up with the mythos. Like Hercules, Minotaur. <laughs> um, I mean, Hercules could be just be Hercules. <laughs> Do it up, Ushi. Do a whole series of those. Then your title could be pretty cute. Uh, I'm trying to think of your title. It'd be like folklore or mythos in like working in some sort of cheese pun there. cheese though. For some reason the cheese thing's funny. Manta cornbread. That just makes you want cornbread now. We got some. I know we do but I can't have it. Thank you. Sleep, I'm not gonna remind you because you usually need it. I feel like a douche reminding people of my stream. <laughs> well, hello, I'm streaming. Where are you? No, I will not do that. It sounded like a truck.
she does make very cute stuff. get like the pogs so it'll probably come in a big box anyway drawings or whatever, that's part of it. Because what you're doing with that is you're also logging all the things you've used for those 10,000 drawings and, you know, when you remember things, um, you know, that's that's when you're, you know you're able to um, kind of call from oh, where you've drawn a lot, it's in your head. So, um, example, like the translucence that you know happens with uh, really thin membranes of things and the sun is behind them. You know, so like leaves and animal ears, stuff like that, you know it looks different and usually it's a bit more yellow or um, pink or darker in terms of the leaves overlapping each other. Stuff like that, you've drawn it enough. It's it's sort of like, how do you know how to write the letter G? Yeah, it's similar to anything you've ever learned. You've just practiced it. Um, there is something I was going to say, though, in regards to that. Um, that sounds like you'd be a um, Give me one second to remember it. Oh, boiling it down. So when you're actually doing a study, don't just go through the motions, look at it, draw it, look at it, draw it. You have to think about what you're drawing. And um, I think I got better exponentially at drawing when I started being more cognizant of how I was drawing it and what it was. So um, example, when I started drawing braids, um, I have a braid hack that I've made. and as you draw a lot of stuff, you'll figure out your own shortcuts and things. So, a lot of people do the braid method like this, and then they kind of fill it in, and they do it this way, and... Wow, that was quick. Did you get it sent to the... I the thing. Once I do? And I guess that is it. Um, a lot of people do the zigzag method. The zigzag method is very bad. Um, there's a lot of room for error with the zigzag method. Um, and it only usually works well if it's straight on or like somewhat straight on. Whereas I've thought of a different method that I call the Y method, and it's based off this. <laughs> the Y method? Why? Why? Because it works. So not only does it work with straight on things, so all you're doing is drawing a Y over and over again on itself. So draw a Y and have the middle of the Y, this part here, end up on your braid line and then have the Y start again from the middle of the smaller branch. What do you want? I'm watching this. Why? I forget. You live with me! I know, I'm smushed. No, no, no. I don't <laughs> like the hovering. And then you just keep doing it over and over and over again. 
right? I'll show you later. Christ. I just, I know anyway. how to do it. I just want to see how you do it. I'll show you later. You live with me. Anyway, so then you draw in the hair and you make it, you know, look a little better. Depends on if it's tight or if it's loose or what have you. Um, and that's going to be a lot more of a solid method where there's a lot less that can go wrong. Um, also, this method works really well if you have like a curved braid. Now you always want to draw the spine, I've been calling it for that. Um, so, but when you do this, you know, the zigzag method is going to go off the rails on this one. Like every time I've seen someone try to do a curved braid with the zigzag method, no way. They get so confused, it looks like a mess, all that stuff. But, if you do it with the Y method, and you do it along the curve, and you always make sure that one center line is always there, it's going to work a lot better. And of course it's good to know how hair curves in on itself and everything like that. Go like from the bottom up? Um, yes. Actually, that's a good point. Uh, that was one of those things I never realized I did. Yeah, I usually go from the bottom up. Um, because you don't want to get to the bottom and have that look super jank. I mean, because usually you'll tie it up with some sort of ribbon or some sort of hair device or some crap. Um, and then, you know, just have it be like that. But usually that's a lot better. And then you can you know, do the hair strands off it. You're going to have to curve a couple of these to make it look more correct as it's turning. But for the most part, the structure's there. You know, and then you do the shading in there, and that's going to help it pop too. The zigzag method is very outdated, and in my opinion, bad. Um, but anyway. Like what? So it looks lazy. The zigzag method? Yeah. yeah, it's just a mess. Yeah. It's always a mess. Um, so real quick, I want to open this and make sure. Gabe, this says sports cards. This doesn't say Sam or Bonsai Jack. No, I said, uh, I said you've got something. Oh, this is just my postcard set uh, sleeves. Uh -huh. So for anyone that's curious, I also made a postcard set recently. They will be here tomorrow. I'll probably put up a post about them, but maybe not before the convention, but after. So a lot of the time when you're doing conventions, and this is a little uh, secret, I guess, uh, comic boards, comic bags, and uh, little like card sleeves and stuff can be used for packaging. So. I ordered 5x7 prints, which I'm not going to call them a postcard pack because postcards are a very different size, they're 4x6, but I've been calling them small prints because they're 5x7, but um, they're very nice sleeves, you know, and you can put things in them and then, you know, it's packaged because your stuff's going to look way better once you package it and look at other things that are professionally packaged and basically take cues from those. So like for that I'm going to put an insert in that shows what, you know, prints are in there so you know when, before you buy it what's in it. Stuff like that. I think a lot of being an entrepreneur or just an indie business person is being able to take cues from everything else. Not necessarily stealing, but at least knowing what would work for you and your products. So tomorrow I'll get my uh, actual prints and I'll be able to make little little packages. And like I was saying about the the packaging, I don't have one of my sticker packs around, but honestly, packaging is really fun for me. I have a lot of fun doing that. I get excited when I make a new product of some kind because it's fun to package it. Hey, shades. Up. What's whoa, snake?
Just waking up and coffee? Where are you from again? So right now for us it's about 6 p.m. I said it without even looking up. That was great. <laughs> Good play.
it? Huh? You sure you, it's actually packed away and not sitting out somewhere? Yeah, well, I thought it was sitting out, but it's not. I think it's sitting out. Did you check your new cubbies? Uh, because I think I would have seen it. I don't know. I mean, you put stuff in the cubbies.
Uh, Eliza, it honestly just eventually happened. Like, I would say for both of us, we couldn't help but do it. Like, illustrations just wasn't, weren't enough. And they became stories. I mean, I think if you draw an illustration and you're still tempted to keep explaining more of, the, of what's happening, I feel like that's a big point that's like, oh yeah, you might be more of a storyteller, you know? If one illustration isn't enough for you to get out what you need to, I think that might be a beginning sign for sure. The only real reason I ended up knowing I was more of a storyteller, um, I mean, I, I was writing stories for years, but at the same time, or writing slash drawing them, but then I started like getting around people who were just illustrators, and once I got around those people, I understood more that that's not a common thing to be both a storyteller and an illustrator. Like, it's kind of rare, um, especially if both are pretty well balanced, but yeah, I think it's just something you can't help but do, um, and it just... It happens. I'm serious. Like, you, you try to draw one thing and you're like, man, I wish I could show this part that I'm thinking of and this other part because that'd be really cool. And then in this world, I think that, you know, this would be happening, but I mean, you can't tell that in this picture. But, you know, your mind would keep going and, like, you just want to illustrate the rest of it <laughs> and show people. Like, um, the funny thing is that. In terms of storytelling, a lot of my stories are so simple that a lot of people say they're for kids, but then they're not in other respects, so they're not for kids. So they end up in this really weird spot where you kind of have to be someone like me, who enjoys kids' stories, but also likes that adult side of them that's either like dark or just you know, more borders more on, on that end of it. I guess it is just dark. It's got a mix of happy and dark, so much so that the dark side is a little too dark for kids. But it looks like it'd be for kids. Um, I guess my Raspberry Mouse story would be fine for kids. Hazel would be more than fine for kids. But all my other stories, they look that cute, but they're not. Um, AFK for a bit. Oh, weird Sniggle! Do you need more sleep? Are you hallucinating? Hi, Camus! How are you? I can imagine, Shades. Yeah. Are you like an ER nurse? Or uh, kind of the person that takes care of the people coming in? Or a doctor? Weird. How about are there construction workers working outside? Because sometimes that happens. Um, there will be a big thump, that sort of thing. You're a guard. I think we talked about this, like a security guard, right? But like in the ER, so no one gets out of hand or gets further hurt than they already are. No construction. Snagel, I'd be freaked out then. If no one's home, no one's around you, that's freaky, man. That is, that's weird. I'd be freaked out. And nothing was in your garage? Do you have really close neighbors? Okay, I actually think I'm done. <laughs> These two went really quick and I'm keeping them really simple, so. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to talk about real quick before I go? I've already been streaming two hours, so that's fair enough. Um, we're going to be in Supercon next week from the 12th to the 15th, and that's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, so if you're in the area, come stop by, come see us, we'll give you a free print. Um, let's see what else. 
So that means we probably won't be streaming again till like the 16th or the 17th, unless Gabe is feeling extra generous and wants to stream on Monday. Um, there probably are ghosts. You should probably give them an offering. Uh, Google what makes ghosts happy and leave them that. If it's your soul or anything to do with your bodily self, leave it be. Just move. <laughs> Obviously, Snuggle. God, it's like you're new to pagan rituals. Come on. God, you're in Kansas for fuck's sake. <laughs> so, Supercon this month. And then next month is going to be crazy. Next month is Gen Con and Dragon Con. Luckily, Gen Con's at the beginning of the month and Dragon Con's at the very end of the month. So, we got lucky there, but having both of those is going to be kind of nuts. Um, and then the last con of the year is New York. Speaking of that, did you get Mike Miller yet? Did you send him a reminder email? No, I'll do it. But is it Kansas City, Missouri? Does it matter <laughs> if it's Missouri or Kansas? Can we just say they're the same? Can we? You've known me for almost a year now. I know. I. Honestly, I just think about you and Cass and that we met her at Spectrum and that was in Kansas. So I just lump y'all together. I, I'm sorry. Don't talk to the ghosts, yeah. Do what Eliza says. Don't talk to them. They're gonna want some weird shit. Hi, it's Hackbox. They're plain states. They all blend together. Yeah, you're in that area. You're not Midwest. You're like... West, Midwest. It's weirder. And they're liars! I'd agree with that too, Paladin. Flattened land. Yeah, I wouldn't want to move to Kansas for anything. We stayed in a hotel in Kansas that was the worst hotel I've ever been in. And at this point, how many have we been in? Like 20 in the past two years? <laughs> Stupid, yeah. 20 or 30 hotels in the past two years? That hotel was the worst thing I've ever seen. It was disgusting. I, like I've I've been to many hotels in my life, never been to one that bad. It, it was, was horrendous. <laughs> like I slept in like outdoor clothes, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a coat, and I pulled it up over my head because I didn't want to touch the pillow. There mm. were holes in everything. I don't think I've ever been in a bed that bad. Either. It was bad. Yeah. It was really bad. And it was like... It was like horror movie bad. Yeah, and it was like a nicer area of... I mean, it was it that bad. really weird. Yeah, yeah, and there was like makeup that was still on all the covers and stuff. And there were what looked like maybe blood stains. I don't know. It was messed up. They didn't dust anything. Mm. It was moist. All the time. All the time. It was disgusting. It was horrible. I don't know, Paladin. I have no idea. It was it was gross, though. Like I said, we haven't been to something like that since or before. And Gabe's been doing cons for like 15 years, and that was the worst he's seen. Sadly, it was in my first two years of conning, but, you know, whatever. But we've seen some really nice hotels. Oh, she's right. Make separate tweets. You always want to add uh, images to your tweets as much as possible. Uh, never forward anything to Twitter from anywhere. Gabe has this terrible thing where it forwards from his Facebook, but then he also does a tweet, so it's like a double tweet, and the Facebook one looks like crap. Don't do it. You can't fix it. Yeah, it was a terrible hotel. Yeah, Snake, you should care a little bit more about Twitter. Not so much Tumblr, maybe, but Twitter's still good. Um, Alright, we're gonna go. Does anybody have any last things to say? We're gonna, like, leave, leave, and then we'll be back for sure the 16th, but maybe Monday. I'm not making promises. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh no, we got two done today, that's good. I'll be selling these. Um, if anybody wants anything from us, you know where to find us. Um, Instagram mainly is the best place, but 
Yeah, go find out if something exploded or it's ghosts. Either way, it doesn't sound like it's a good day. <laughs> um, but yeah, have a good rest of your weekend, you guys. And I hope you had a good 4th of July. Um, if you're with us, thank you. Um, but we'll see you next time, all right? Take care. Bye. Hello.